Hello folks. I was asked to do a little video on my uh, solar setup battery bank charger so here it is. I got a uh, trace chaser or tracer Chinese MPPT controller. You can find them for less than two hundred dollars now. Uh, really good unit for Chinese of course there are more expensive ones out there uh, got a little what's up meter so I can zoom in on that right now the batteries are charged it's just keeping a little half amp trickle charge in there she's in about 0.1 watts it's a little overcast but every now and then we get some sunny sporadic um, sun coming through uh, this is the little box that comes with the tracer. It gives you some information. It's not as good as a Bogart. I'll run through a few of the settings for you. It shows 14.3 volts the battery. And if you go over, that's your light output because you do have a output down here. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but 150 amp hour batteries. I'm only charging four. They're in float mode. Uh, shows your wattage coming in. It's in 24 volts coming down uh, from the PV array here. So I've got to focus in on that. And I just got 400 watts up on top of the roof in series parallel. And then they come down into those two bus bars. And it goes to number eight, and I've got a PV disconnect, so I can shut the uh, panels off if I need to work on the system. Uh, so anyway, this does give you some information. Tells you what your your voltage is on the panels. Uh, Fourteen point three volts on the batteries, charging at about a half an amp, just float charging. Uh, it'll tell you how much is actually coming out of the uh, output on this unit down here you can turn this on and off it's a DC output I think it's up to 20 amps you can pull on that and set the timer up and everything else so anyway what I wanted to show you as I'm back out here is There's uh, six T105 six volt Trojan batteries. They're wired for 12 volt. Uh, they're series parallel, six volt, six six volt batteries, but it's 12 volt going out to the inverter. Uh, on this side over here, I have the um, 1500 watt Tiger Claw. I'll try to get a better picture of that in a second. Right now, I'm on a tripod fumbling around. But what I wanted to show you. As I've set this up, where I can actually disconnect my PV array by pushing the button on this breaker. So now the PV array is disconnected, and I've got a battery switch down here. You can see that black clamp right there. And I'm going to take and this battery here is a little low, so I'm going to go ahead and hook that up. So I'm going to turn the batteries off. I'm going to take my positive lead, positive on the battery, my negative lead I keep over here, away from the positive lead, and I hook that to that. Now I'm going to turn it on battery two because battery two is for the charging station. Now what you'll see is that on the controller now it's got a red light instead of a green light it's no longer in float mode and the PV up there is still off so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to get a little closer here I'm going to try to get this in focus for you show you what's coming through if you can see that 
I'm going to turn the PV array on. Now the 13.76 volts that you see is my battery bank that I just showed you, the, the 6T105. So that's actually measuring the voltage there, but it's going to show the amperage running through the meter. So I'm going to turn it on now. And now the uh, tracer's going to kick in and start working. See my wattage going up, 200 watts, 14 amps, 15 amps, 16 amps. It's just climbing, 246. That's 400 watts of panel in December. The sun's way down. They're fixed panels. They're probably at, a, I'd say, mm, 40, maybe 43 degrees. But they're fixed directly south. So I'm putting out... Uh, almost 18 amps 242 watts in the summertime I got it up to uh, 373 was my max and that was with the Sun almost directly overhead and the panels were still at a tilt so let me zoom out here a little bit we'll go back up to see it's showing 13.9 that's actually reading that one single battery by itself and it's putting 16.3 amps in there. Now eventually this that little battery is going to charge pretty quick at 16 amps because it's a regular automotive car battery. And you can see that it's got the showing. It's not flashing so it's not in float. Showing the PV is it good. And like I said all I did was run a uh, I'm gonna take this off the tripod here in a second. Get in the way. All I did was run a normally one or single and dual battery switch, so it can go one battery bank one, battery bank two, or one and two. So I could actually charge my bank, which I don't want to do it. You don't want to charge your a full battery bank with a dead battery, or else your batteries will bleed back into the uh, the battery you're charging, which is that one right there. The old AC Delco battery I got from work. I tested it, it was good, so I saved it. Uh, everybody should have a hydrometer, wire brush, battery water fill. Uh, so basically that's that's my system and no it's not in a battery box yet. I don't use it every day so it doesn't gas off much. Uh, I'll just to give you an idea. The year that it's been up and running, I've used, if you can see that, but not even three quarters of a gallon because when I first got them and charged them, it took just about half of it. So I've only used about maybe a half a gallon of water in a year, just having them on float. They're not boiling out, they're not using that much uh, water. Remember, never add electrolyte to your batteries, just water, distilled water. Uh, so, anyway, that's it. I got two extension cords running down they are 12 gauge heavy duty extension cords are running through conduit I'll try to get outside and get a picture of my panels and how they're positioned uh, let's see what we're still putting out for uh, power to that little battery 224 let me raise this back up folks Still putting 16 amps into that battery. And uh, 221 amps. Now as it drops, it'll slowly, right now it's in bulk charge. It'll just slowly start to taper off. Once it goes into float, it'll keep it at float, half an amp. Shouldn't gas off very much, just like these other the T105s that I've got. I do want to take it off the tripod and see if I can get you give you a better look at the inverter. Now Neural Nar, you can look him up online. He just did a uh, video for back feeding through. He made a special cord. You got to watch the video. It's really important to do it the right way. See, I have a I have a place right there where I could actually hook my battery uh, charger up if I had to charge these real quick if power came back on and I had power for a little bit. I got notes from my son so it doesn't goof anything up. But I could back feed through that electrical plug right there with this inverter plug this and he also did a uh, sorry about the strap 
he also did a review on this 1500 watt pure sign Chinese tiger claw inverter inverter and he seemed pretty impressed with it so I decided to pick one up uh, of course everyone's got to have their uh, kilowatt meter that kilowatt meter just runs this power strip down here when you turn on and off um, another thing that I'm getting ready to install that I haven't done yet you need to get one of these uh, class T fuses this is 200 amp should be plenty for the uh, there's a little inverter there little carry inverter just pick it up and go that's not a pure sine wave won't run motors very well they wouldn't run a refrigerator off of it but it'll run lights small heaters uh, won't even run a fan very good because a fan is an electric motor you want to run it through pure sign to get your fan to work good because that thing will just eat power up the, the pure sign is the way to go but I'll I could take one of these like this little 19 amp hour battery and that inverter I could run a fluorescent bulb that takes maybe 20 watts probably all night long got a bigger one back there and I just charge these periodically but uh, that's my main battery bank and I'll try to get outside and do a, uh, a video let me show you real quick on the I'm gonna turn the PV off and you'll see, see that battery's already in float it's already dropping down there's only uh, what's 14 still 200 watts but it's dropping down battery voltage on this particular battery is almost 14 volts it's probably gonna overcharge a little bit help desulfate it which is good so the charger's designed to do but I'm gonna kill the PV You'll see that light go off and I'm going to switch this back to off and then I'm going to disconnect my negative battery and I just kind of hang it right now that's not hooked up because I don't have the fuse in yet but I just disconnect that hang this back up out of the way just in case somebody inadvertently hits my switch I don't want these live touching each other uh, so I'm going to go back to battery bank one first you always want to switch your batteries first and then you want to turn on your PV array and that's going to be those batteries right there now those four are hooked up just for this purpose I left the other two unhooked so it's gonna be four and I'm gonna turn it on oh, my PV array is on see the, the light PV uh, panel voltage 40 and right now it's 13.5 is what those T106's are doing and you can see that Since I just turned it on, I had disconnected the power to the, the Tracer MPP controller, so it's going to ramp up a little bit, and then it'll, it'll settle back down to uh, the 0.5 amps, and just barely keep those trickled. So uh, yeah, you can see we're at 14.4, 1 amp, uh, and it's 12.41. And the sun is low in the sky, like I said. I, I had it up to 373. That's the most I got out of 400 watt panels, which is to me pretty impressive. You can you can actually do quite a bit with just 400 watts. So anyway, I'll try to get outside and uh, or maybe I'll do a separate video on the uh, solar panels themselves. Uh, thanks very much. Take care, guys.